section classification. The road and welded section may be considered as an assembly of individual plate elements. These elements are assembled together in order to improve their engineering's property without increasing the amount of steel required. Each section comprises the outstands and internals. Here are some terminologies that you need to know. The outstands are these. These are the internals. These represent the webs. And these represent the flank. As the plate elements are relatively thin, when loaded in compressions, they may undergo local buckling. This may limit the axial load capacity or the bending resistance of the sections prior to yielding. This premature failure can be avoided by limiting the width to thickness ratio of the individual element within the cross section. The purpose of the section classification is to identify the extent to which the resistance and the rotation capacity of cross sections is limited by its local buckling resistance. The classification depends on the slenderness of each element and the compressive stress distribution. This is defined by the width to thickness ratio and this is defined by the steel grade. The classes are normally defined in terms of the performance requirement for the resistant to bending moment. There are four classifications. In general, class 1 is the best and class 4 is the worst. The class 1 sections can form a plastic hinge with the rotational capacity without the re reduction of the resistance. The section with class 2 can develop plastic moment resistance but have limited rotational capacity because of local buckling. For class 3, the compressive stress can reach the yield strength but the local buckling will prevent the development of plastic moment resistance. And for class 4, the local buckling occur before the attainment of the yield stress. In principle, class 1 and class 2 achieve the plastic moment. We can say that it achieved full plastic moment. The difference between class 1 and class 2 is the rotational degree or in another term is the ductility. It undergo a larger degree of rotations in comparison to a smaller degree of rotation of class 2. In principle, the ultimate capacity of class 2 is slightly lower than the ultimate capacity of class 1. As far as the design concern, we are designing for the plastic moment. Therefore, both can be applicable for the design. As both is higher than the design moment. The class 3 undergo yielding at the compression part in the form of local buckling, which happens before the plastic moment occur. In layman turn, we consider that it is partially yield and it has very low degree of ductility. For sections of class 4, the local buckling occurs before the yielding stress. 
the rotational degree is also very low. For your information, high rotational degree is preferable as it provides symptoms of failure for survival purposes. To conclude the principle, class 1 is the top priority that we prefer. We can design the moment according to the calculations based on the euro code for the plastic moment and it possess a high degree of rotational capacity. Class 2 is the second best option. We can design the plastic moment capacity safely. However, we need to know that it possess a limited rotational degree. If you still wish to use the element with class 3, it is still possible as Eurocode provides as calculations for the class 3 in order to identify the initial yielding of the member, except the calculations that would be slightly more tedious. Class 4 is not recommended. In fact, both class 3 and class 4 is normally not recommended. You are to use this section with caution to prevent overestimating the capacity of the member. For steel structures, engineers normally decide the section of the member. With that, by all means that we try to choose section within class 1 and class 2. If applicable, we would like it always to be in class 1. Another thing that you need to know about classification is that the classifications refer to the weakest component of the section. For example, a typical I-beam consists of the flank and the web. If the flank is found to be in class 1 while the web is found in the class 4, then the entire section is considered as class 4, as the weakest component will govern the strength and capacity of the member. Class 1 is least susceptible to the local buckling, while class 4 is the most susceptible. However, it doesn't mean that it will never encounter local buckling. It is always a good practice for you to check the local buckling of the member. To determine the classifications, you need to get the yield strength of the material and also the width to thickness ratio of the members. For your information, the classification given by Eurocode is in line with BS5950, only that they term it differently in the form of plastic, compact, semi-compact, and slender. Basically, they are referring to the same working principle.